Hello, I'm Dave Perry and this is my FJR 1300. I have a few things to tell you about this beauty, so hop on the back and we'll go for a spin through the Irish countryside. I've been the proud owner of this Yamaha FGR 1300 for exactly one month now, so I think it's time for me to spill the beans. Not one to start with the complaints, but I'm annoyed, however, with myself and not the bike. I uh, got a really sweet deal on this bike from Mega Bikes in Dublin and uh, had a few quid left over so I thought I'd treat myself to a really good uh, intercom system so I could listen to the iTunes library on my phone as I'm tootling around the countryside. Anyway, big huge mistake. Why? Because there ain't any song I have on my phone which sounds better than this engine. With a 25 litre tank and a personal average over the last month of 48 miles to the gallon, and believe me I wasn't hanging around, this fill up should last me well over 300 kilometres. However, that doesn't come without confusion. I've read a lot about the conflicting data from the fuel gauge and this little trip to the petrol station proved no different. The reserve indicator has been flashing for 17 miles. Lead me to believe it's nearly empty, but as you can see on the reading here, I can only squeeze less than 17 litres into it, which means I had loads left. But then I suppose the other side of the coin is whenever I have filled it up over the last month, the gauge still shows two markers off it being absolutely full. So in summary, the fuel gauge is not to be trusted. You'll have to run a series of your own tests as I've done over the last month. And whether that means carrying a small container of petrol in one of your panniers until you run out, well then, so be it. Back in the saddle and back on the road, which is where this bike belongs. Now is probably a good time to tell you that I'm five foot eight. On paper, this bike probably shouldn't fit me, but it does. In fact, it fits me like a glove. I've also seen other reviews where riders as tall as six foot four have also said it fits them like a glove as well. Don't ask me how that works, just part of the bike's magic, I suppose. Now I have to watch the speed here. This is a 30 kilometer per hour zone which we're entering. Um, so, I know you're all watching the, uh, the app on the iPhone there, which is a great app, um, and that's one of my, okay, I'm nitpicking here, but one of my little gripes about the bike is that the numbers on the, uh, on the speedometer are a little bit small for, for my aging eyesight, so it's probably not the bike's fault, it's mine. Um, so I downloaded this app which uh, I can see just out of the corner of my eye without, to be honest, even having to look down. I can just see it out of the corner of my eye, quick glance, and I know what speed I'm doing um, without having to study the, uh, the speedometer numbers. And of course, I'll put a link to the app in the blurb below. However, one of the more pleasant surprises is that even though it weighs in at the heavyweight corner of nearly 300 kilograms fully wet, it is as happy being stuck behind the locals as it is shaving my knee hair on the twisty roads. It also doesn't feel top heavy, which is a great plus for a bike of this size. What a beautiful day to be on two wheels. 
Welcome to the Irish countryside. This is always one thing you have to watch out for in this part of the world because it's very agricultural and with a lot of the twists and the turns, especially on the country lanes like this, you're quite often met with a combine harvester coming around the corner on the wrong side of the road or half on the side of the road or a slurry tanker. So you just got to remember that. This is my hometown, Baileyborough, County Cavan in Ireland and it's a great place to own a motorcycle as long as you can uh, weave in and out of the potholes which is what this county is famous for look at that one there, whoa! that would have uh, ejected you from the seat <laughs> like hitting the ejector button in an F-15 fighter jet <laughs> I'm just riding to the top of the hill here where I'm going to stop and give you my verdict of the FGR so far. Now I've got a loose screw somewhere. <laughs> People have been saying that about me for years. But uh, I think it's in the um, windscreen um, mechanism. That seems to be where it's coming from. I've noticed it on the last few trips out and uh, of course when I'm at home without the helmet on and then I just start revving the bike just to see if I can hear it of course it doesn't happen then it only happens when I'm riding the bike but it does feel like it's coming from down there and indeed if I push the windscreen up to a different height it disappears so I think I'll have to take the windscreen off and search for a loose screw when um, I've finished this So you've probably gathered by now that in keeping with that great old Irish tradition, the heavens have opened and it's absolutely persisting down. However, fear not, I've just borrowed this shed from a friend of mine, albeit on two conditions. The first one of his was, don't get me in that video, and his second one was, I quote, and I'm not getting on the back of that bloody thing. Anyway, cracking on. If, like me, you've read loads of reviews and watched loads of videos about this bike, then you'll know that one of the things which keeps coming up time and time again is the fact the handlebars are too close together. I've just come from a cruiser style of bike before I bought this, so if anybody was going to notice that, I would have. However, by the time I got the bike home from picking it up from the shop, which is less than an hour, I might add, I didn't notice it at all. I did the first few minutes I drove away from the shop, but in a way, I really like the fact that you feel in control of the bike. You feel more connected to the road, especially when you go into a corner and you've got to ride the bike out of the corner. It's great. I really prefer this style of riding. After all, this is sports touring. Next thing I want to mention is the riding position. I'm not leaning too far forward and I'm not leaning too far back so I can fall asleep on a long journey. I really feel in control of the bike. I feel as though I'm embracing the bike and I'm telling the bike what to do rather than the other way around, if that makes sense. Next thing I really want to mention is the seat. Now, I haven't ridden a long enough yet. I think the longest ride I've had on her is four hours. <laughs> Stop it. Now, I haven't ridden her long enough yet. I've only ridden her for about four hours. And the <laughs> you're immature. <laughs> So I haven't done that many lengthy journeys on it yet, but I did notice after a few hours, I did have to get off because the legs were definitely paining a little bit. But hey, that could be the same for any motorbike. And it's also a great excuse for a coffee. The luggage space. This is like towing a caravan behind me compared to other bikes I've had. Fantastic. I can get everything I need in. Now, albeit I am a t-shirt and jeans man, but I can get all of the camera kit, tripods, everything, all within the panniers. Another great thing I love is that it all unlocks with one key, so when you get to your hotel or your destination, unclick it with one key, walk into the hotel, and forget about it until tomorrow. 
I know I've touched on this before, but the weight of it, it's a massive bike. It's nearly 300 kilograms fully wet, but it really doesn't feel it. I don't know whether they've transferred the weight lower down, but it's definitely not top heavy. You can easily ride it through slow moving traffic, no problem at all. One thing which is prevalent though, when you are riding through slow moving traffic, you can definitely feel the heat coming out of the fairing uh, on the bottom half of your legs. Now, in Ireland, that's not a problem. If I was wearing shorts and riding around the south of France every day, I might notice it a bit more, but sure, I'll live with it. The next thing I want to talk about is the sixth gear, or more to the point, the lack of it. In 2014, Yamaha added the sixth gear, but this 2010 model doesn't have it. If I hadn't have read so much about it, I wouldn't have even noticed it. I think it's just the beautiful, sweet sound of the engine making you think that there's another gear to move up to. But it, does, it definitely doesn't need it. <laughs> you do not need a sixth gear to lose your license on this machine. So in summary, this Yamaha FJR 1300, what do I think? I love it. I've had loads of bikes. It excites me. Even looking at it when it's outside on the driveway, I can't wait to get out and be with it. I absolutely love it. It's fantastic to ride. It's incredibly comfortable. Great fuel economy. It's without doubt the best sports tour on the market, in my opinion. And cosmetically, the bike hasn't changed that much in nearly 20 years, but it's still up there with the fanciest of them. It looks amazing on the road, it looks incredible in the showroom, and it's one of the very few bikes which looks as good without the panniers as it does with them on. I just love the look of the bike, it excites me. What more can you say? And there you have it. After riding this beauty for the day, getting home, taking your helmet off, you'd be forgiven for smiling like Wallace and Gromit. So, my mate Sean can have his shed back, take down his interior design, and I'm just going to check if the rain has stopped. And we're off. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please give me a like and also hit the subscribe button and I'll hopefully be bringing more videos to you very soon. But in the meantime, enjoy your FGR 1300. Absolutely brilliant.